On a very special Infinite Loop show, Mike and Casey learn a valuable lesson. What we do? Mike and Casey learn that sometimes you just can't have it both ways. Wait, what? Have what? 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 That sometimes you just have to choose either the hot dog or the hamburger. I choose... On the Infinite Loop Show! Hello, everybody. Welcome to a special Happy Fourth of July <laughs> Infinite Loop show. I'm Michael Gaines, and I'm Casey Coglin. Wow, you're in a good mood. It's the Fourth of <clears throat> July. Well, why wouldn't I be? Everybody should be in a good mood. Yes, clearly, everybody should be happy, <clears throat> and um, or everybody in the United happy- States should. Yeah. It, <laughs> yeah. What? <laughs> no, everyone in the world should be celebrating our independence <laughs> with us. Well, not England because they're still pissed. Oh, oh. <laughs> quit bringing up old shit, England, really. I know. I mean, it's like 230 years ago. Give I it up already. Know. Let it go. <laughs> Let it go. I know we didn't get good grades in high school or anything, <laughs> but seriously. Listen, in our own country, there are still people in the South that are pissed off at the North, so. <laughs> oh, my. Th- that, that's a whole other that's, thing. Wow, yeah. You're, you're lagging a little bit. A <laughs> little bit. It's okay. Because uh, the recorded version will be fine. <laughs> <laughs> right, if you're listening to this after post, um, awesome. <laughs> All right, let's 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 get into the show. What do we have today? Um, oh, well, t- well oh, you, you started the whole, ind- yeah, you got this Independence Day list, so why don't you talk about that? So, right, I mean, since it is Independence Day right now, mm-hmm. uh, it might behoove our listeners to mention that the iOS and Mac app stores have a long list of Independence Day specials going on for apps for the 4th of July. Mm-hmm. Um, they're mostly games, and there's really way too many to list. If you want uh, full details, 9to5Mac has a c- comprehensive list of every app, their prior uh, purchase price, and then their sale price. Mm-hmm. Most of them, it's they're knocking a few bucks off. Most of them, it's upwards of half price. Um, pretty great if you've been looking to buy a lot of games like Need for Speed or Tetris or really, I mean, a lot, a lot of games. Uh, some of the Mac apps, they got some VNC apps up there for sale. But um, yeah, go hit them up for the 4th of July, just today only. Oh, so we only have a few hours. So maybe I'll try to get mm-hmm. this out before it's 12 o'clock on the East Coast. Well, then again, <laughs> they may let it go until like the West Coast uh, midnight. Probably. I would guess probably <clears throat> West Coast time since they're over here. So that's good. That's good. All right. So Google Chrome came out on the iPhone and the iPad. Have you tried this? I have been all over this. Ooh. I'm actually, um, I'm really into this new app specifically because they have the synced uh, bookmarks and tabs between all devices. Wow. This is really, it's kind of like what Apple was saying they were going to do with the iCloud tabs in Safari, but that's not going to come out until Mountain Lion sometime in July, probably the end of the month. Oh, I see. But okay. Chrome is doing it now, and it is fabulous. It's actually made me take Safari off the dock on, no. my, on my iPhone and iPad. I'm using Chrome now as my main browser on those guys and my desktop as well. Oh my goodness. So what do you like so much about it? Specifically that I can open any tabs and then, you know, close, I mean, not close the tabs, but I can like close my laptop, go to my phone and bring up that same tab that I was looking at prior. So if I'm researching something on my laptop, say I'm looking up prices or something on furniture, Maybe, and then I go to that furniture store, and I'm like, what was it again? Ooh. Oh, yeah, I can bring up that exact tab saved at the exact spot that I left it on my iPhone. Oh, okay. So, uh, so I went to the Apple store in uh, New York over the weekend. It would have been interesting if I had tried that because I didn't realize that you could do that. So now yeah, I'm, I'm going to buy it, right? Well, not buy the it. Big, the big thing for me. So everything is... 
really almost synced or the same across all my iPad, iPhone, and Mac. And that's really kind of the big, the kicker for me. It's it's really pretty great. So is it a good browser? I mean, other than that, yeah, that, that I mean, feature. Is in terms of speed and everything, I, I think it's about on par with Safari. Maybe it's a little bit faster, mm-hmm. but it's it's a browser, you know? I yeah. mean... I know. Well, the reason I ask is because I've been having some problems with Safari on my desktop on my Mac Pro recently. Mm-hmm. It's it's I don't know what it is. I'm I'm still mm-hmm. trying to figure it out. I need a tool to look at apps on the Mac and look at how much RAM and and this this goes far more into um like top or anything like that. Like I need a detailed description of what every app is doing because I think Safari is eating up my system resources. And when, because when I when I do the same thing in Chrome, it just fires up really fast, and I don't have any problems with it. And but the problem is that I have I have other issues with Chrome, like crashing and things like that. So I, I heard on the new Macs it's causing a lot of crashing, but not on like older Macs. Like uh, I haven't had it crash on my laptop in for as long as I've had the laptop. Yeah, I saw that uh, I was. Um, the latest version of Chrome was causing problems on the MacBook Airs because it was doing something to the video card that was causing it to crash. Mm. Um, I'm sorry, causing the Mac the the Air to crash, not the app, but it was it was causing uh, kernel panics. Ooh, yeah, that's not good. Kind of a big deal. Yeah. So what they did was they they set it up so that it doesn't use accelerated graphics for now, and then they're they're going to research it and put out a new version. Hmm. So it sounds like a memory leak problem. Yeah, probably. Um, Chrome's a lot more complicated than most browsers, even though it looks more simplified. Um, it actually includes Flash within the browser. So if you don't have Flash installed at all, Flash apps and animations will still work within Chrome. Wow. Okay. So, yeah, I'm playing with Chrome now. Oh, that's pretty damn fast. I must say. it's It seems to be... <laughs> no, it seems to be faster than Safari as far as rendering... Oh, that's pretty it may maybe um and you have to be logged in on Google Chrome on your desktop. Right. The, okay, so the one yeah. caveat, you have to be logged in to your Google account for mm-hmm. all this syncing to work. Um hence why whenever you launch that's Chrome fine. Home on the desk, it asks you, "Hey, log into Chrome." And for a while, I was like, "Why would I want to log into my browser?" Mm-hmm. Um, but now I'm like, "Okay, now I get it. Mm-hmm. This is worthwhile." Yeah, I'm. I think I'm going to start taking a, a closer look at Chrome, uh, Firefox. It was my yeah. secondary browser at one point, but the problem that I've been having with Firefox is that it just completely destroys my Mac Pro in the sense it's that it's so slow. Like it, it's always been a terribly slow browser. Not not as slow as IE, but mm-hmm. for me, it's always been a really slow browser. And I think part of that is all these um, all of these add-ons and plugins that Firefox is pretty much made for and famous mm-hmm. for. And that's why people use it because you can get all these custom add-ons and everything, um, but that just slows the experience down so much. I don't understand why anybody would want to use it. Okay. Yeah, Firefox. I mean, you just launch it, and my hard drive starts thrashing. <laughs> you can hear it spin up. And everything. Whereas with Chrome, you launch it, it fires up fast, it brings up the little window with the little window, the window. Um, my last experience using Chrome, which is several months ago, was just really bad. And so I'm I'm gonna take another look and, and see. Google Drive was released for the iPhone and the iPad. Uh, it's nice, except what? <laughs> um, small caveat: you only get your docs that you've made in mm-hmm. it. Any docs that are shared to you, mm-hmm. which is most of the docs that I have in Google Docs, they're mostly shared docs from other sources and other people i only have like two or three docs that i've authored right. and that's all that shows up in the drive so it's like awesome what am i going to do with all those docs that i've been working with for months that just so happen that i didn't actually author them yeah um that doesn't make any sense because google owns all this code i don't understand why they do this it's not a, a limitation of ios for sure 
Mm -hmm. Uh, So I don't know why they put Google Drive out with this limitation. It doesn't make any sense. The the whole point of having Google Drive is that you can have your shared docs. So that, like you and I, we use Google Docs for doing the notes for all our shows. And Mm -hmm. so that's what we would use it for. So if you're out on the road and I type something up and, and you check your doc, you'll see that I made an update. But it, it also, I mean, uh, Dropbox can do this. Sure. So why can't Google Drive? That, that's In what I'm Dropbox, saying. Dropbox, you have shared folders and you can see stuff that other people have shared with you in your Dropbox folder, Google Drive should be able to do the exact same thing with shared doc. Mm-hmm. Oh, I agree. Why that's not actually happening. Maybe it's in, a, uh, I don't know, an update. But it's, it just seems like that should have been first and foremost before, even before, because Google Drive, is, it's been out for a while. It just hasn't been out for iOS. Oh, and yeah. so I would think they would iron this out even before they get the iOS app out. Mm-hmm. There's one thing that I've been finding with all these Google apps is that there's no unified sign-in. So you have to sign into each mm-hmm. and every one with the same. Uh, I know. And, and what happens with me sometimes, this happens to me on my desktop, um, is for some reason I'll get signed out of Google. And so all my tabs will get signed out from Google. But if you log back into one and then you refresh the other tabs, they'll log in. But this, but you can't do that on here. So that's something that I think Apple would... There, there are two things that I really wish... Well, three things that I wish Apple would address. Okay, is, five is, or six things. No, there, there are three big things that I wish Apple would address on, on iOS. One is, is this... If you have this kind of ecosystem where you, where you have like one login for all different apps, that I'd mm-hmm. like... I like a document space. Like a single sign-on? Yeah, like a single sign-on. Like, why would you want that? Under, <laughs> a single sign-in for a family of apps under, like, a specific company. Mm-hmm. Um, I'd like a document space. Like, we have a uh, space for file. Um, I'm sorry, a uh, space for music files, a space for photos. I'd like a space for docs. And mm-hmm. the third thing I like is um, user switching on an iPad or iOS. Well, not, maybe not so much the phone, but on, on the iPad for sure. So do they not let you log out at all on the Drive app? Because a lot of apps will at least let you log out and then log back in, kind of like a website. I mean, the only way I could see it allowing for user switching is similar to how a website would do it. Is yeah. You have to physically log out and then log back in under a different name and password. Okay, it's a big pain in the butt, but, <laughs> you know, it's, it's a smartphone or OS. It's simplified. What are you going to do? Um, but do they not allow for that? Well, I'm, right I mean, now? just like an iOS, so that like if I give the my iPad to my kids, oh, uh, they can so switch out. You mean as far as the iPad, the OS as a whole? Mm-hmm. Because that's yeah, that, that's gonna be a while. Uh, I think Apple likes the idea of the iPhones and iPads being personal, because then you just you just the fix is you just buy a new one. <laughs> is that the fix? Yeah, you just buy one for your kids. There you go. Then they log in and problem solved. I don't like that solution. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what's this iCade mobile controller? I saw this uh, a couple days ago. This yeah, is really I think, wicked. I think you're more excited than this than I am because <laughs> it looks l- like an old ass Game Gear, which wasn't that hip 10 or 15 years ago. Mm-hmm. I don't know why they're bringing that back. <laughs> Well, one thing I've always said about the iPhone is that I absolutely despise the fact that there are no uh, actual controller buttons for games. Mm-hmm. If you're playing Final Fantasy or you're playing Asteroids. You, um, you're playing um, the Atari. You and I were playing the Atari games last week, and mm-hmm. playing Asteroids on on a touch screen is just awful. And so to be <laughs> well, able, well, Asteroids, you don't have to do a whole lot of movement. Mm-hmm. I can see it for Final Fantasy and maybe Sonic, you know, and, and some more, uh, we'll say, newer games. But, like, stuff like the Atari games where it's maybe up, down, and, a you know, bash button on, on the right, it, I mean, you don't require a whole lot of input. It's kind of like the um, Angry Birds games and, you know, more, I mean, as far as today's game standards go, mm-hmm. their older Atari games are almost more akin to the the casual gaming 
games of today where oh, it sure. really only requires one, maybe two inputs, and it's very simplistic. Mm -hmm. Does this run on Bluetooth? Um, I don't know. The way it fits around a phone, like it totally encases the phone, I'd imagine that there's probably a 30-pin connector on one of the sides, and it plugs in that way. I'd be really surprised if this is Bluetooth. Simply because it encases the phone, why not take advantage of the 30 pin connector? Why make it a wireless Bluetooth if you already are encasing the phone? Yeah. You know, nobody's going to see any connectors or wires or anything. I'm, I'm looking at the article now. It does um, use Bluetooth. That's silly. Well, here's what they say. This is the article on Cult of Mac. It says it circumvents Apple's pesky and expensive rules on using the 30 pin dot connector. Oh. So that's so, why. So it's a licensing thing. Yeah. I see. Okay, fine. So. I'm totally not going to get this then. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but no, I'm I'm probably going to get it. I'm going to give it a shot because I want to try a couple of these games and see how they work. I want to see uh, I want to see the uh, the Atari stuff work with it. So I'll give it a mm. shot. This I saw today. The Retina IMAX are possibly coming in October. But apart from this, now. I don't know if you or I wrote this into the into the doc. It doesn't matter. But apart from whoever put this into the doc, you you did. No, I, you did. oh I did. I read today that the um, the IMAX are starting to become harder to find. Is that they're starting they're starting to become a shortage oh. of IMAX, which usually means that we're going to be getting the new, IMAX new ones soon. are coming down, the pike, and that's yeah. fine with me because I desperately need one. However, when you start seeing shortages. Mm -hmm. That generally means that it's within a month, maybe two. Yeah, not I don't, October. Maybe the shortages right now are due to not having a significant Mac Pro update in June. Maybe that everyone you know was waiting for the new Mac Pros that that were going to be announced mm -hmm. at WWDC, and they announced new Mac Pros, but they were pretty. Um, light in the pants so everybody <laughs> you know totally ran and went out and like that's it i'm gonna go get a mac now freak you know screw I almost mac did. pros and they, exactly you all almost did so i think that that might be causing the shortages now is is everybody who was kind of waiting for mac pros just throwing their hands up in the air and saying mm -hmm. okay i'm going to get a 27 inch yeah. forget it i if I find that the the Retina display is the only change to this iMac, I'll probably get an older one if if I can get an older one cheaper, because I don't need a Retina display. I would be really surprised if they went Retina display. I bet the only change to these guys are Ivy Bridge mm -hmm. and the Nvidia uh, GPU. Probably yes, that's that's absolutely true. I mean, I I'd, I'd be really surprised if they went. It took a long time to get Retina up to 15. Mm -hmm. Then what? A couple of the 27 inch Retina, not hard to do. Yeah. You know, I would imagine that's pretty hard to do. Yeah. So we'll keep an eye on this for sure. Um, if it's going to be October and we're seeing shortages now, um, yeah, you, you may be right about that. Um, but I'd like to see them sooner rather than later. Oh, everybody would. Because I, I mean. I just yeah. had a disk too slow error while we were recording this again. It's it's time for a new machine, Mike. Sounds like it. Hey, so I hear um, sandboxing is um, quite the issue, and you being the um, current developer right now, probably running into this. What's going on? <laughs> what, well, I'm not. Month, we're only one month in, and people are. I'm not running into this myself because I'm not doing any desktop development. I'm only doing iOS. But I have been keeping my eye on this, and I've been reading uh, and, and listening to what other developers have been saying. Uh, this mm. came up because there was an article on Mac Observer, uh, I think today or yesterday, about what developers are having problems with as far as um, sandboxing. And the problem that I'm seeing, if, if I were a developer, and if, for example, one of the biggest... Um, uh, developers that I know is barebone software. Yeah. And we've used text edit and, and all that for many, many years. 
Um, it says this article says that they're off. They're unable to offer iCloud support in Yojimbo. The reason why is because if if an this is this is the, the problem that I'm having with this whole sy- system. If you have an app on the App Store, then you can do iCloud syncing. However, yes. if you want your app to be outside the App Store because you want to do something that Apple doesn't like, you can't do iCloud syncing. It's nuts. It's nuts. It's crazy. I don't like this. I don't like this direction that Apple is going. It's a trap. Uh, I, <laughs> maybe, but I, I, I mean, one of the whole reasons why people like the Mac platform is because it's built on Unix for those people that want to get into the, the, the guts of the mm-hmm. whole thing. And I mean, really, why do we need this? As a desktop user and 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 for for um, users that really aren't affected a lot by viruses and such now. I mean, yeah, the only thing I can think of is, A, they're trying to be more proactive in that space as far as being more secure. Because realistically, we're not affected, as Mac users, we're not as affected by viruses because they're not targeting Macs. Right. Most virus makers are targeting Windows, which is the majority of the market share. So they get hit with all the crap and we're over here, you know, living the life. Um and it, it's not because Macs are more secure. And, and there's been articles and research to prove that, that any time they do a, um, what is it, pwn to own contest, right. you know, the Mac is, is either first or close to it. Um, you know, Macs get a lot of heat for not being as secure. So either they're trying to fix that before we do become, you know, crazy uh, infected targets, or... It's going to be something associated with being more uh, tied to the cloud. Mm -hmm. I can understand. Because when you think of sandboxing, you think, well, this would be really most helpful on like a mobile device Mm -hmm. or uh, iOS devices. You know, that makes the most sense. Why on a desktop? The only other reason I can think of is unless your desktop is more tied to the cloud and becomes more like a mm-hmm. mobile operate lightweight operating which is system. and this goes back to what we were talking about over the last few shows is 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 OS 10 going to merge with merging with iOS, with iOS exactly here let me let me give you another example um th- i've never had to deal with this myself but it says that uh, bare bones is text wrangler and bb edit loses some features for example uh, they had to remove the authenticated save option what this means is that if you're on one account and you want to save to a directory of another account, you can do that. You you log in as um, <laughs> I suppose you the log now because I've never like done this. Log in as different users. You'd have to log in as a different user so that you can save the document in the other directory. Well, now because mm-hmm. of Apple's restrictions, you can't do that. Mm-hmm. And so these are the things. And I'm wondering if 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 you're a smart app developer, mm-hmm. could you possibly Release the the um, the Mac app version, and then release a binary that sort of supplements it. Does that make any sense? Like like for example, let's say let's say you you like release an update or plugin, sort of or... like an well not an update because all the updates have to go through the Mac app store. But you so a you, plugin, sort of like a plugin, mm. like like sort of like a binary that runs alongside. Hmm. And says, "Oh, you own this software because we see that you own it, and we're gonna." Well, I guess they can't really turn those features on because then Apple would. Yeah, I was gonna say because mm. you were saying at the beginning of this, either you're you're screwed going through the Mac App Store, or you're screwed pretty much not going through not the Mac going. App Store. Either way, if you're developing for the Mac, Apple has a foothold and a say in what you're developing. Yeah, I I'm not liking this direction that Apple is going with with these sandbox apps. I'm I'm not because it's it's essentially stifling the ability for these ingenious apps to it not is. do what they can. So anymore. soon we'll be jailbreaking our Macs to get around this. I don't know if we're going to be jailbreaking our Macs, but I would question the validity of the Mac App Store. If I were if I were a company like Bare Bones, who's been around forever, mm-hmm. and they're mm-hmm. going to lose features, why do you mm-hmm. need to go through the Mac App Store? Is it because, uh, and, and it may be because when Mountain Lion comes out, 
They're, yeah. they're going to be those three levels of security where you can run anything, run things that are signed but not in the Mac App Store, and only run stuff in the Mac App Store. The default, I believe, is going to be run only apps in the Mac App Store. So mm-hmm. it's, it's entirely yeah. possible they're doing this because by default, that's what people are going to are going to have uh, their it machines It is, set and to. not that that's not going to be changeable, but it will still be the default. Yeah. So like natural scrolling. <laughs> Um, there's one more thing here. It says the developer of Mars Edit, um, which is a good editor, by the way. I've, I've used it before. Yes. The difficulties he faced allowing existing Mac App Store customers to access beta versions of his software. Mm. Um, this is because of a yeah, Mac App Store policy. That. And you, the only way you might be able to do that is through your own website. I don't foresee the Mac App Store allowing beta. Right, and and then even if you do put something out through your own website, these users that don't have their their security settings lowered to run yeah. these apps are not going to be able to run it anyway. So you're screwed. I I, I just well, don't, I mean, you well, can just screwed, put up but, like a little help page that says, "Hey, just in case you're living in a cave, this is how you get around this little snafu." Yeah. So I'd like to see what happens over the next few months and years with this. Mm. I, I'm probably, I'm probably going to turn the middle setting on where they're signed, but not from the Mac yeah. App Store. Yeah, that's what I'm planning on doing. So you're still safe, but you can still download from other locations other than the actual mm-hmm. Mac App Store. So you're not kind of yeah, yeah. stuck. But then what Stuck happens there. to some of these apps that we've been using for 10 years on Mac OS X? And then we, we fire they, a mountain line and they don't work because you have to set the, the security settings to the lowest. Well, then... Well, that's their responsibility to, to get then at least signed. To either, right, exactly. You wait until the developer fixes this, which really developers go through this any new iteration of an OS. You know, I mean, I... I talked about prior that I had to wait months for Cyberduck to get onto Snow Leopard mm-hmm. one one year. And I use Cyberduck on a daily basis as my main FTP app and they weren't Snow Leopard ready when that came out. So I had to wait for a long time. Yeah. But I mean, app developers they have to know this is coming. They have to know what they have to do and either they're going to get their shit ready and out there or People are going to find another way. Yeah. So that's true. In any case, <laughs> there are rumors surfacing about iPad minis uh, to compete against the Nexus 7s. I can see Apple doing this because if there's a space, if, if there's a, a, a worthy space in the seven inch um, market mm-hmm. for, for these tablets, then of course Apple would want to get in on that. Because yeah. then you can have students that, that run apps at, at school, they can run apps at home that maybe their parents have, shared shared accounts. Sure, I could see that. What do you think? For a long time, I thought this would just be silly that Apple doesn't care about this lower market. Apple has always you know, only been in the, the higher end kind of luxury market. Mm-hmm. I mean, luxury with quality, obviously. They're not just raising the prices for no reason at all. I mean, there's serious quality in their products. Right. But for the iPad, I always thought, like, why would they dip down into this lower tier? It's mostly ebook readers that they'd be competing with. Who cares? Mm-hmm. Um, 7 comes out. And yeah. the Amazon Fire, while primarily an ebook reader, still puts up a good fight in this 7 inch kind of form factor and and also around $200 price range. Mm-hmm. Um, now, yeah, it, it seems like this kind of pocket market is really picking up steam. And it, it's almost the same argument for why do we have an 11-inch MacBook Air? Mm-hmm. Sure. You know, um, it, it really almost fits the same niche. People who had like a 13 inch or a 15 inch uh, laptop you know I mean why would we want an 11 inch mm-hmm. but look the 11 inch MacBook Air is selling like people love that mm-hmm. and it was almost like beforehand why would you make that that's a silly choice yeah. the mini the iPad mini we don't know what it's going to be called but 
the this mini iPad, it it's almost kind of fills the same void. And I think you know you're onto something with students primarily being the low you know cost kind of entry level item mm -hmm. plus couple this with their iTunes University that they're pushing now iBooks author tool that they're pushing now they're really to get more into education they're really trying to get more into uh, textbooks and books in general mm -hmm. so that really kind of argues in favor of a 7 inch iPad I had just thought of something. Remember how people were wondering why the iPad 3 was not called the iPad 3? Because they want to differentiate from the iPad mini. What if they were going to call the iPad the iPad 7? No, no. That so? would be dumb. It was mm. a dumb name for the Nexus 7. It's a dumb name for the iPad <laughs> No, okay. it would be iPad no. Mini or Nano or something like oh, along the line. True. They've been naming their iPods. They didn't name the iPod like three, and then the iPad one inch. You know, mm -hmm. whatever. Okay. So, um, I fix it, uh, which is a great site for learning how to repair your Macs. Um, they took apart the Nexus 7 and they said that because of an extra millimeter of space, mm -hmm. that it's more repairable than the iPad. That extra millimeter, oh, it's so roomy in there. <laughs> oh, you just, like, get so much stuff in there. It's awesome. How many Higgs boson particles can you th <laughs> No. <laughs> I, I had to I do it. I no math. <laughs> um, yeah, they gave uh, the Nexus... A Nexit. <laughs> the Nexicon. The Nexus, an iFixit score of 7 out of 10, and an iPad iFixit score 2 out of 10, uh, just because of that little wiggle room. So clearly the higher score being better. Mm -hmm. um, um, I, this isn't really anything shocking. I mean, we know both the iPhone and iPads and now the new Retina Mac. But pros are really hard to repair. Yeah. Um, you know, they leave little to no space in those cases. Every time they put out a new iteration, Apple uh, makes it harder and harder for like third parties to repair them because they make up new tools as they go along. Yeah. You know, they make up the, um, what is it, the tri, tri screw or tri wing screw. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. The, um, they had a, a different kind of hex screw the mm -hmm. first time around. You know, every time they make up these proprietary screws in which you have to order a new set of proprietary <laughs> parts in order to take it apart and actually fix the damn thing. And that's aside from the fact that they're tiny and squished and glued and, you know, so many little things that... Oh, sure. <sighs> don't make it easy, but <laughs> damn, are they beautiful and fantastic. <laughs> so um, take that, Nexus. <laughs> iCloud Beta is out. There are preview photos of it. And uh, let me see. This is on MacRumors.com. It is pretty. Pretty sweet. It's pretty looking. And right now, I mean, it's mostly working for the most part. I checked it out. Mm -hmm. And it as soon as I logged in, it's got all the same apps as before. You know, your mail and uh, contacts. But then they have the reminders, calendar, Find My iPhone and Notes apps mm -hmm. are the new ones to their web repertoire. Yeah. Uh, where they're really kind of web apps in that they pull your uh, iCloud or previously MobileMe data into them. So reminders, Find My iPhone and Notes all work beautifully. They pull all my notes and reminders in and I can see everything uh, that I did on my iPhone or iPad. You know, I can locate everything on the web through by my iPhone just like I could before. They mm -hmm. got a little bit of a different looking interface. Um, calendar looks, ex most of these apps look exactly like they do either on the Mac or the iPad. Um, they kind of got that skeuomorphic, you know, design where it yeah. either looks like leather or torn paper <laughs> or whatever. Um, calendars, it brought in all my calendars, but none of the actual events were on the calendar. Okay. So that was kind of weird, but I mean, obviously it's still in beta, so that wouldn't be terribly hard, I would think, to iron out. 
but it looks fantastic and um, it's it looks really promising. Cool. Speaking of um, of iCloud and Mobile Me, uh, Mobile Me shut down the other day. It but did. You can still get your data off of it. I I was able to do that. I went in. I I grabbed all my folders and dragged them over, and that was pretty much it. That's all I had to do. But if you forgot, uh, I think they're leaving it up for another couple of days. They say or, a limited time. Yeah, which could mean anything. So just open right. up a folder, copy them over, just get it done, or else get you're going to lose those pictures from 1997. Even if you already <laughs> did, I mean, who knows? Uh, I know if you open Aperture now, since uh, it used to pull from there, so now that that's closed, Aperture will actually ask you upon opening, hey, do you want to download all of your data and photos and everything you mm -hmm. know, to uh, your local drive? Sure, why not? Um, you know, even if you already did it, it doesn't hurt to have two right. copies. Here's something which has just been a thorn in my side the last few days. <laughs> is this <laughs> this whole issue with um, Apple? Apple won its patent case against Google, mm -hmm. Samsung, and and essentially what happened is well, here's the thing: Apple's got eleven patents. And it's blocking the Galaxy Nexus from being sold in the United States. As a matter of fact, yesterday they, uh, the Galaxy Nexus was taken off play. Uh, so you can't buy it anymore. Although some people were able to grab one before they were um, taken down. Yeah, yeah. Um, what people have been doing on Google+, and of course it's Google, is that they've been, they've been using this hashtag called Boycott Apple, which has been completely ridiculous because some people think that Apple is the first company to ever file an injunction against another company. It's not true. Well, I mean, not injunctions, but this type of ferocious product-stopping injunctions, yes. Well, I, would, I would have to agree. No, I found one against I the Nook in 2009. Who? Who was stopping the Nook from being sold or produced? Um, what is it? Um, uh, I think it was Google. Hold on, let me. Check. I had the link and I just lost it. Hold on, it, it the, was. It was no. The it was Nook runs Android. Why would Google? Not, oh, maybe I don't know what I was looking. At. I lost the link. I'm so well, lame. No, I no found it. No, I found it because uh, somebody Good was saying thing, sir. it was. It was in 2009. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. <laughs> I had forgot. Okay. Uh, I mean, I spring would, Design. Would, here, Spring Design seeks injunction barring Nook sales. This is from 2009. Okay. Nobody's heard of Spring Design. I'm sure they had a fair case and a fair mm -hmm. trial. Right. But really, I mean, injunctions and, and patent infringements and lawsuits, obviously no big thing, nothing new here. Mm -hmm. The type where they're literally stopping products at the border and in customs that's pretty new, unless I'm, unless I'm totally in the wrong here. I haven't heard of anybody else actually getting product stopped, and or at the very least, um, you know, release dates and actual product launches pushed back. Mm -hmm. Like a, um, what is it? The HTC One is a good example. Just recently, they didn't get anything really pushed back as far as launch dates or release dates go. But they actually, I mean, so AT&T released it. But then all of a sudden, there was, I think there was like a week, maybe two weeks at the most, that you could get this from the carrier. And then all of a sudden, for about a month, you couldn't get it anywhere at all because Apple had um, gotten it stopped in customs and they were just being hold, held up in crates. Mm -hmm. um, that had to have devastated HTC sales, you know, of that phone. Whereas, who knows, you know, how big that would have gone had had they just had a normal release and a normal sales time. I'm not mm -hmm. saying that it was going to be some kind of iPhone killer or really even compete, but I mean, Apple really freaking shot an arrow to its knee. <laughs> um, but. You know that that kind of that kind of huge, and it's not even like really you know lawsuit litigation or or anything like that. I mean, they're literally getting huge judgments to stop products from coming in. That's huge. Mm -hmm. All right, to to 
to speak completely uh, as a devil's advocate on this whole thing. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't like software patents. I think. No. I mean, I understand them. No, let me let me back up. Well, okay, I don't like yeah, what's happening like the ones with them. The Samsung and Apple are going after right now that Apple actually won on. Mm-hmm. They're all pretty much software patents. The the slide to unlock the mm-hmm. the Siri integrated search uh, patent, which really, if you're going to do a voiceover assistant slash you know search algorithm, how else are you going to do it? Well, if it's not going to be slightly like Siri. But here this all right, again, speaking devil devil's advocate, if you're if you spend a lot of time and money designing something, now Apple didn't design Siri, they bought it. But no. if if this was gonna be your icing on the cake for an operating system in a, in a mm-hmm. new device, and mm-hmm. then all of a sudden somebody comes along and essentially copies what you did don't you think that at least for a certain period of time that it's, it's sort of like what happens with in, in the medical industry. Mm-hmm. How long does it take before a drug becomes generic? Not it, long at all. Well, not Almost. long at all. Right. But, but my point is, is that shouldn't there at least be a period of time when if you invented something that you should be the only people to use it. But you don't know how long, I mean, it's hard to say unless they can actually provide documents and proof in court how long they might have been developing this behind the scenes alongside. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, just kind of giving them the benefit of the doubt. I mean, Android did have voice recognition and voice to search and everything like that prior to. I mean, it, it, it wouldn't be weird to say maybe at the same time they had been in, working on a way to integrate all those things into one kind of neat coalesced space, mm-hmm. which is very Siri-like. Mm-hmm. So well, this, this is the part of the whole thing that I don't understand. Is that A lot of people say, well, Apple stole this and that from Android, but then you don't know yeah. how long they've been developing these things in-house. Yeah, no, it goes Apple. both ways. Right, it, it goes, goes both, both ways. ways. So how do you, so so you're absolutely right and I totally agree with you on that. Is that is that we need to know how long Android has been doing this. But then who is Android? Like where do they get this where do they get this from because if you want to talk about prior art, Apple has had voice recognition in their operating systems for what, 20 years? Well, on the desktop and on everything. On the desktop. But it, it's been so <laughs> unusable. Like, oh, it was terrible. People literally don't even know that it's there. I mean, the people that do know it's there know mm-hmm. that it's crap, and they're not going to go out and tell their friends and family about it. So that doesn't really do much for word of mouth or, or marketing or anything. And so people probably didn't know it was there. Right. I mean, a lot of the times when I used to have to sell Macs to people, a lot of the times people had no idea th- about the um, accessibility preferences that they had for voiceover and screen reading and everything like that. Um, that's not really a known feature. Mm-hmm. But, I mean, that that can't really... I mean, I guess it's it's along the same lines as Android's voice-to-speech, you know, and speech yeah. recognition software. But, I mean, both... I think it would be safe to say that both prior to, say, like a year, maybe a year and a half ago, were just horrible and fairly unusable. I, I guess what I'm saying is that if, if you're, like, Apple, we all know the history of, of what Android was going to be before iOS mm-hmm. came out. Then iOS mm-hmm. comes out, slide to unlock is brand new. Mm-hmm. Um, so at what point does slide to unlock b- define the look and feel of iOS. And how long do, how long should it be before another company says, you know, we want to do this. However, there's a five-year mandate that says, well, you can't use this for five years. You're going to have to come up with something else. Then after a certain period of time, like I said with drugs, where between the time when a company that developed it can make money off of it and the time it becomes generic, it's theirs. It belongs to them. And yeah. so that that's what I sort of feel about this whole thing is that, Maybe you know, maybe Google and Apple and 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 maybe WebOS for all I care. You know they they all come up with their own ideas. But what defines the operating system? What like Siri defines? Like here's here's a perfect example. There are Siri commercials out there that don't say a word 
about the fact that this is Siri and it's made by Apple. It's just yeah, people using no. it. That, that's well, what I mean by the fact that it defines what the iPhone does. And right. So- and you could say the same thing about, you know, the iPhone in general. Mm-hmm. When 4S came out, I mean, those are, I, they're not Siri commercials. They're iPhone commercials. True. And so well, they pick one, maybe two things to point out about the iPhone and it's Siri. And mm-hmm. whenever you suggest, or at least whenever I, you know, am saying, if I get asked, why should I get an iPhone? What's so great about an iPhone? Mm-hmm. Number one is always Siri. Siri. Then Android comes along. Oh, we've got this too. Well, you, I mean, honestly, yeah. you had to know that it's going to happen. It happens with computers. Mm-hmm. It happens with all the technology. And even to give some sort of waiting period to like new technologies in which other companies can't. Like, I don't know, debut a similar product. It just seems silly and really kind of anti-competitive. But also, what would that time frame be? Because five years for one is a freaking eternity in technology. Even six months is a long, long time. So I don't think you can really even kind of say, okay, Apple, you have, Six months with Siri, have fun, you get all the royalties, and then Android can have a shot at it. You know, that that would just be crazy. I, I see it like this. Let's say you're, you're watching a commercial for some Android phone, and somebody does slide to unlock. Mm-hmm. For the uneducated, the people, not the people like you and me that can tell the difference visually between one and the other, but they see a slide to unlock, and they see this phone... And they think that it's an iPhone because they don't know any better. And then they go to Verizon and they buy an Android phone because they wanted that one thinking it's an iPhone. That's what I'm saying is that if, if something defines an object, a, an operating system, a, a look I and would feel. Say, I, I totally agree. And that's primarily where you get these cases where people call all tablets iPads. Right. People who don't know and people who are just kind of average people. People, I mean, that's where you get these generalizations from. They think any tablet is, oh, that looks kind of like an iPad. That must be an iPad. Mm-hmm. What iPad is that? You know, they just call all tablets iPads. And you could say the same thing for an iPhone, for most smartphones. A lot of Android phones look like an iPhone. And it's not because of the slide to unlock. It's because of the form factor. It's mm-hmm. because of the, the screen. It's because they have one or no buttons on there. And it's a sleek looking little thing. You know, I, I think it goes beyond the slide to unlock thing. And whether or not you have a patent on that or you're protecting that patent or whatever, people are going to call things what they're going to call things. Mm-hmm. You know, people call all, all tissue paper Kleenex not because... Yeah, you know, Kleenex had some sort of patent or something because it just was the best selling, you know, like band aids or rollerblades. Mm-hmm. Those are name brand things that kind of became the name of, of the whole category that they're in, mm-hmm. not because they had patents or anything and were proactively acting on those patents, but just because the look and the feel was similar too. And so people like, you know, they see iPad on the news, they see iPad commercials, they see iPad on billboards, they see, I mean, there's far more iPad marketing than there is any other Android tablet marketing or posters or commercials. So when they see one in the wild, they're going to say iPad. They're mm-hmm. not going to say tablet. And so in that case, Apple's done a good job. In, in which case, they really don't even need to patent anything. They can just do their marketing as they've been doing for years. And there you go. Job's well done. Mm-hmm. Mission accomplished. Yeah. Okay. Well, we'll see what happens. Um, right now, what we've been hearing is that Google is, or Samsung is working on a fix for this, a software fix, obviously. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, um, they've gone right <laughs> back to the workbench to get the Nexus out as soon as possible. And we'll see what happens with it. I, th- I think that the whole patent, I, th- I believe that companies, just like drug companies, uh, software companies should have a, a patent on, on certain things. But, I th- but it becomes really, really messy. 
and, and as we've been seeing over the last few years, not just between Apple and Android, but but al- among other software companies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Patent trolls for one thing. Company buys a bunch of patents from a company, and then and they they try to sue the rest of them. You know what it is? It's it's making money off of patents that I don't like. Well, it is. It's a lot like. It's a lot like Wall Street and stocks. Mm-hmm. In my in my head, it's like they're all making a ton of money off of nothing. Mm-hmm. Like this is the patent isn't the product. There's no physical product there, mm-hmm. and all these patent trolls and everything are making money off of the patents. Like you know, stock exchange people on Wall Street are making money just from trading stocks. Yeah. With, there's no physical thing there. They're just passing along papers and stuff they're just making money off of nothing <laughs> that just really feels wrong to me like yeah. <laughs> you shouldn't be making more money on the non-product than people are making money on the actual physical right. product right i'd like to see some sort of reform in this whole patent thing like maybe there's some sort of system where if a company comes up with an idea it goes into a technology pool Mm-hmm. Or something like that, and and if another company comes up with one too late, they say, "Look, um, um, company X already came up with this. Um, this is what you're going to have to do if you want to use it. No suing, no, no absolutely no, su- no, because the the whole process of suing another company, it, it who really makes out on that? The lawyers do. Yes, no, exactly. So, all right, let's move on to rapid fire before we uh, talk about this for another other. three hours, and we're not going to kill each other. <laughs> oh, you're not? Okay. Why? Nothing. <laughs> All right. Um, Apple settles. This is interesting. <laughs> More patent. Apple yeah. settles with the with ProView, the Chinese company ProView, over the name iPad. Here's the thing. They settled for $60 million. ProView what were they ex- asking? $400 million. Oh, my God. And here's the thing. People in China, companies in China are pissed at... This is funny. They're pissed at ProView. They're saying mm-hmm. that ProView bullied Apple into giving them the $60 million. <laughs> like even... Because $60 million, And I would have to agree. $60 million was even too much. Even though $60 million was just a freaking sliver of the $400 yeah. million you were asking for. Yeah. It, it was a... Flilly... Um, position they even had because ProView was well, they were going through bankruptcy or something like that yeah to so where they had didn't literally didn't have a financial leg to stand on and at the last minute it says oh uh, i guess we'll sue apple because we totally <laughs> don't need money or anything over here yeah, they desperately needed money and that's why they needed the 400 million and they didn't get it so who knows what's going to happen but yeah um it's it's not good for ProView. I don't know no. what they're going to do with that sixty million dollars. And frankly, I don't care. You can go buy some <laughs> rims and some gold chains, and you have fun with that. Um, in other news, iWork.com closes shop mm-hmm. uh, on July the thirty-first of this month. Um, much like uh, Mobile Me closed up shop, we mentioned earlier on June thirtieth. Uh, you had a limited time to download your data from galleries and iDisks, and mm-hmm. you still do for MobileMe. So now, um, iWork.com, if you ever used it, you are probably got an email already from Apple saying, download all your things. So <laughs> go do that. Download all the things. All the things. Why not? Why not? <laughs> While you're at it. And Messages Beta is off Apple's website, which means Mountain Lion must be around the corner. <sighs> this is kind of I, know, I I just set up a new Mac uh, this last week and I went promptly to Apple's site to download messages onto the new Mac <laughs> and it's nowhere to be found. Oh. I even searched, it's nowhere. So Oops. take that as any omen that you would like. <laughs> All right, our apps for the week. Mine is is actually quite an odd one. I so, <laughs> no way. This is this is good for everyday use. My kids every day. <laughs> my kids wanted Domino's one day, and you know we don't order Domino's very often. But um, I didn't feel like calling. I just didn't feel like can I get? So I went to the website. I wanted to try ordering through the website. Well, you go to the website and it says we have an app. So I downloaded the app. 
the app is actually kind of cool. I wish that it was organized a little differently, but it's but f- for what it does, it's really good. Is that you order a pizza or or whatever else you want? What you order a pizza it, from Domino's? <laughs> That's you it, it asks you what kind of toppings you want, what kind of crust you want, and and the whole all these other things. And you basically assemble. You can even put like half pepperoni, half onion if you want, and it's really nice. But what's what's interesting is that it uses your location to figure out what your closest one is, and it, it found mine. And then after you're done ordering, <laughs> this is cool. It actually gives you real time updates as to where your pizza is. So. They, they, they're putting the ingredients together, that's step one. Then it moves on to step two. They're assembling the pizza, and then like a little, the, like it's, it's one, two, three, four, five. So one flashes when they're putting the ingredients together, two flashes when they're putting the pizza together, three flashes when it's in the oven, and that's when you actually go and, and pick it up. And by yep. the time I got there, it was already done. Yeah, I like their app. Their app is, um, and really Domino's, they've gone through quite the transition as far as not just their website or their apps are concerned, but really their overall pizza making, Mm -hmm. I guess, philosophy and menu is concerned. They've really gone through a transition, and their app and website are really the most usable and fantastic and Pleasing experiences as far as ordering a pizza is concerned. You have a steam engine going on over there? No, I don't think so. That's weird. You got a lot of static on your end. No, no. <laughs> That's all right. All right, what's your app? Oh, we talked about it already, but you could talk about it again. We did a little bit, and I'm going to recommend it because it's such a fantastic app. It's the Chrome browser. Yay. <laughs> um, like I said earlier, I've actually pulled Safari off the little dock on my iOS devices and my Mac, replaced it with Chrome. I'm trying to use it as much as possible as my main browser. Um, a lot of, you can't fully on iOS because anytime you link to something, you know, in the browser or if it's like in an email and it links to the browser or um, an app that links to the browser that's always going to link to Safari mm-hmm. so you can't you know do that but if you start in the browser um, searching or what have you I always start in Chrome now and it's, it's purely because of the tab syncing um, you know if I start researching something on my laptop at home and then I go out and want to either continue or remember like oh what will that, that I was looking up, um, I can pull it up on my iPhone, mm-hmm. you know, in its full page. I mean, Safari will kind of do this if I save to either a bookmark menu or the reading list is really great for syncing between desktop and iOS. Mm-hmm. But the Chrome browser really, uh, really tops them all. Hmm. Cool. All right. That's going to be it for this show. Happy 4th of July. Yay, well, go blow stuff up. Two more minutes here in the East Coast. <laughs> oh, well, you got three hours here, so if blow you, up all the things. <laughs> if you want to contact us, I am at StarMic on Twitter. Casey is Casey Queso, K-A-C-E-Y-K-A-S-O, the Casey, not the cheese. Mm-hmm. If you want to email us, uh, Infinite Loop Show at gmail.com. Of course, we're at the Infinite Loop Show and Infinite Loop TV on twitter and we're also on facebook and google plus and all of the things all the things all the things so thank you for watching and listening and we will talk to you next week oh wait one more thing oh oh you and i have a new show i forgot to to mention everybody we do we do it's called crazy it's it's a gaming show called the quest log (gasps) oh that's such a good name it is a good name who came up with that i don't know probably this hot chick probably the hot chick the hot chick came up (laughs) with a girl name (laughs) <laughs> so listen for that. Um, it, it's the quest log. About <coughs> Excuse me. Ooh, I oh got my god! My don't throat. like get all choked up over it. No, it's at thequestlog.com, which is not done yet, but you can find the quest log. We only have one episode up so far, and it's up on iTunes. So just do a search for the quest log, and you little will find episode. us. Now, little baby episode. <laughs> all right. Thanks, everybody. Bye. I like Max. <laughs> <laughs>